Hey guys, Zen here, and recently Ubisoft announced yet another event here for Rainbow Six Siege, and there's also something that's been a concern in the community for a while, and so we're going to speak on that as well. Now, guys, we are pushing through to that 400k, and I'm absolutely blown away, so of course, subscribe to the channel to help us reach the goal, and let's get it started. Now, just before we begin, my friends over at Now Drinks have dropped their brand new green apple flavor, and it's the latest in their lineup. For those of you that haven't tried it yet, Now is a drink that increases performance, reaction speed, and focus when you're putting in those extra extra gamer hours. The new green apple flavor mixes up a sour, sweet, and fruity taste while also being sugar-free, and the formula includes all of the same benefits just with a fresh new flavor that I think you guys will enjoy. And so, you can pick up a bag of green apple with the link at the top of the description, and if you use code ZEN at checkout, you get a new shaker free of charge. It's available right now for you guys. They ship around the globe, so check out green apple with the link below, and thanks to now for sponsoring. All right, guys, so Ubisoft dropped a surprise announcement, and they released, or I suppose re-released, the Golden Gun events into Rainbow Six Siege. So for those that missed it the first time, Golden Gun was the first ever arcade mode event and had a unique spin on the core gameplay. Everyone spawns on the map with just a Desert Eagle with one round in the chamber, and after each shot, you have to reload the weapon before you can fire another one. One bullet, one kill on any operator in the mode, so it really doesn't matter if you're a three armor or a three speed, you're taken out in just one shot, and so it's a high risk, high reward game mode. But now they're calling it Golden Gun 2.0, and they've made some small changes to it. This time around, we'll be able to experience it on three maps, Border, Coastline, and House, and they've also left a few operators out of the fold. Mira, Goyo, and Amaru are out this time, and you will have access to gadgets, but you won't be able to bring any deployable shields so that they can't be exploited. The only other thing to note here is that they will be making the special Golden Deagle skin attainable, and it'll cost 12,500 Renown, or 360 R6 credits, but it will only be available through the event, which will last until the 5th of October. And so, those are the details but I think this opens up a bigger discussion about the arcade modes and the interesting bit of reintroducing them as 2.0 variants. So, considering the arcade playlist is a fairly new concept to Siege, I think a lot of us expected a little more variety with these modes. Golden Gun and Attrition have been the only ones so far since the announcement, and instead of creating a new mode with all new mechanics, there's this reissue of Golden Gun with a few minor tweaks. Now, I am a fan of this mode, and I like it a lot because it's really only meant to have fun. It can be sweaty like everything else in Siege, but this is really a way to just change up the pace, and I can appreciate that. But an idea that's been floating around since we heard about this playlist is a legacy mode that goes back to an older build of the game that would, say, give Jaeger and Bandit back the ACOG, or an unlimited operator mode that would allow multiple of the same operator on a team. I think these are the kinds of things the community wants to experiment with, and so hopefully we can see that out of this new aspect of Rainbow Six Siege. Now, moving forward, in year six, every single season will include an arcade event, and this is part of the reason why the devs will never introduce two new operators in a single season ever again. One of the goals has been to expand Siege, and of course, one of the ways they're doing this is by adding these more lighthearted arcade modes, and so personally, I'm just holding out for a new way to enjoy this playlist, and really, no matter what, it's something that we're going to have to get used to, because next year, it'll be a major, consistent part of this game. So, I'm really curious to know how you guys feel about this. Do you want to see more of these 2.0-like experiences, where they reintroduce a mode and make minor changes to it, or is a new mode with new gameplays something you'd like for every new season of year six. One new addition that I really like here is that this time around, you can actually play the arcade mode in a custom match, and I think this opens up a whole new way to experience these events. Not only is this a great thing for this event here, but imagine if they were able to bring this kind of functionality with every event, and customs is a place to have access to every event in the game. I know a lot of people unfortunately missed Mute Protocol because of some of the exploits, and so if they came out with this feature for an event like that, then those who didn't get the chance would be able to and it's just something I think would go a long way. Now, they have announced Attrition is next, most likely another 2.0, and I assume that'll launch next week, and then there's another one coming that's locked, and I'm really hoping it's something brand new just to mix things up. Now, moving on, there's a new way to get recognized as one of the best players in Rainbow Six Siege. The FPL is ongoing for Europe, and it's a way for up-and-coming Siege talent to play at the highest level of competition and possibly make it into the Pro League. So, each and every Sunday, after you sign up, you'll compete in a solo queue style environment that'll allow you to be discovered within the pro scene. There's even an ELO ranking, and the top 100 players will be invited out to compete in a qualifier, and the top two players after that will play against pro players. This is really the first time that there's a straight path that leads directly into the pro scene, and if you are one of those special ones who can compete at the highest level, you could find yourself at the Six Invitational fighting for it all. Now, there is a small fortune to be made even during these games, and so even if you don't push all the way through, you could end up a few dollars 
dollars richer. But with everything going on in the world today, I am a little concerned about the plans for the Six Invitational 2021. If you're a fan of Rainbow Six Siege, you really owe it to yourself to attend at least one Six Invitational because it is the ultimate place to celebrate one of the greatest shooters of our time. Not only can you meet pros and enjoy the finals, which is just incredible, but there's also always a big reveal that shows off new operators on stage and some of the plans for the next year's content. But of course, this year could be a bit different because of the massive scale of the event and our current situation. Personally, I'm hoping that they're able to pull something off because they've been clear in saying that year six is going to change everything about Rainbow Six Siege and being there to see it all revealed will be iconic. And then the final topic for this video is something that the community have been talking a lot about and it's actually the battle pass. Now, I've been playing Rainbow Six Siege every single day since the launch of Shadow Legacy and I've only just reached about the halfway mark. It's kind of a double-sided edge where on one hand, it's nice to always have something to grind for and even in the free track, there's some excellent loot. But on the other, you have to commit just pure time to get it all done and it's a tough balance to manage. Now, there is still a good amount of time before this battle pass comes to a close, but if you're not playing daily, you're just not going to unlock everything and to some extent, I do understand that. I think it's more about always giving the player some kind of reward for playing, whether that's daily or just casually, there is always something to achieve and always that next tier. But if you're a completionist, you're going to grind this one away because this is the largest, most content rich battle pass that Siege has had so far. And if you're in it to grind every single tier organically, then it's going to be some time before you're all done. A lot of people were asking for thoughts on the size and grind time of this pass. And I'm almost positive that I'll complete it just before the time is up. And so just to be totally honest, there are ways to get to the end if you choose to, but ultimately it is free and also just extra loot just for playing the game. And so I'm happy with it. I think if Ubisoft does choose to introduce like a 100 tier pass, then it'd be nice to get a little more time to complete it. And so hopefully that helps. Now, the last thing to note here is that if you do decide to opt for the premium pass, there are a bunch of tiers that have R6 credits as a reward, which lessens the blow of purchasing it. And I think that's where a lot of that frustration comes from for some players. Naturally, you want to get what you paid for. And if you grabbed up the premium pass, then you want every tier to be unlocked before it's over. And I think that's just the nature of the beast with all battle passes. They offer premium tracks to offer up more loot and they make them limited time. So you dedicate more time to unlocking everything. And so for me, because there is some of the best loot here that's in the game, I think if you're a dedicated player that has that time, it's worth that grind if you can swing it. But all right, we've got a quick bonus for the video. Now that the Golden Gun playlist is back, are you jumping in and playing it while it lasts? Or are you looking forward to something new? I've actually been having a good amount of fun and I've been playing it a little more than I thought I would. And I came across an insane sight that I thought I'd never see. Roll the clip. What in the world is that? So yeah, I always knew Ash was a five speed, but wings, what an incredible sight. And so that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you loved it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for the rest of my content and leave a like on the video if Ash is faster than three speed. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey. I'm out.